We've got a video off. I'm looking for it, but talking over. You'll need to mute as well, please. Q2 Players present The Hound with the Long Hair, starring Craig Cameron Fisher as narrator, Kat Lamin as Catherine, Matt Tester as Nigel, Karen Hayworth Taylor as Sheila, John Coop as David, Laurie Coombs as Mum, Hugh Cox as Stephen, and Andy Cox as Billy. Welcome, everybody. I am the narrator. And I should like to tell you a tale. It is an extraordinary story about ordinary people. And it takes place not very long ago in a place not very far away. There are two houses in James Crescent, a middle class coastal suburban estate. Actually, there are many more than two houses in James Crescent, but it is two houses in particular numbers 19 and 21, on which we are focusing today. Number 19, home of Nigel and Catherine Milton, an unremarkable couple. He is a sales executive for something or other. She is an IT technician for, I forget whom, it's not important. They've been married for six years, Nigel enjoys table tennis, walks in the park, and maintaining a small stamp collection. Catherine enjoys surfing, poetry, and collecting quirky old technology. Let's pay them a visit. There's a one-eyed yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. There's a little marble cross below the town. There's a broken-hearted woman tends the grave of Mad Carew, and the yellow god forever gazes down. He was known as Mad Carew by the subs at Kathmandu. Catherine, darling. Yes, love? Uh, you remember that feral cat we met in the park the other day? The one that scratched you when you tried to pet it? Yeah, that's the one. What about it? I'm not entirely convinced it was a normal cat. Oh. 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 Is that all you can say? Oh. What should I say? Well, well you could scream, or look shocked, or, or panic, or something. Would that help? No, I don't think so. Then why bother? He must have something to say. Well, it looks to me like you've become a werecat. I thought it was odd when that scratch healed up in ten seconds flat. But wait, a meerkat? No, meerkats are those funny little fellows who bob up and down in the savannah and advertise something I've forgotten on TV. I said werecat. Like a werewolf, but a cat. A man who turns into a cat under the full moon. <laughs> a man who... <laughs> Look, I hate to pour cold water on what is, I'm sure, an otherwise exemplary theory, darling, darling, but it's it's 3.15 in the afternoon and the sun is shining down on us doing a phenomenally bad impersonation of the sodding moon. Yes, it, it is rather odd. Really? That's the odd part. That's what we're taking from this. Darling, I'm turning into a bloody cat. Just look at me! Ow! Crap! Well, never mind. We'll be cat and the cat. Now you're just taking the piss. A little bit. Now, I'm sorry, darling, but it's the poetry reading next week, and I'd really like to be able to do this one from memory. There is a one-eyed yellow... There, there's a one-eyed yellow idol to the north. Never mind about the fucking yellow idol. What are we going to do? Do? What should we do? What can we do? I'm no cytogeneticist. But I would guess that if it's not cat-based lycanthropy, or more correctly, oleanthropy, the scratch must have caused your recombinant DNA to interact with the unstable alleles of that feral specimen and provoke a spontaneous mutation in your base pairs at a cellular level, turning you into a heteromorphic homo sapiens cum felis catus life form. 
I shouldn't worry about it. It might go away again. And if not, well, it might be quite fun. Hey, maybe Billy could get you a job in the carnival. I've already got a job. Although, admittedly, it's hard to see my clients taking me seriously looking like this. And you know what I think of your brother? Well, he's a bit of a clown, I know. Uh, no, no, darling. He's not a bit of a clown. He is a clown. A clown with Miggins Carnival. He travels from town to town in oversized shoes, ginger wig, white face and a big red nose. He drives a collapsible car for a living, for Christ's sake. And if he spoke to Drew Miggins, maybe you could moonlight as the amazing human cat. Bloody hell, this is just a big joke to you, isn't it? I've got a good mind to ask Billy anyway, just to get out of here for a while. Well, put your claws away and sit down. <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. Whoops, domestic. So, let's leave these two to their caterwauling catalogue of catastrophe. <laughs> and move next door to meet some of our other players. Number 21, very recent home of David and Sheila Hayes. Another unremarkable couple. I have no idea of their professions or interests because they haven't been living here long enough. In fact, they moved in yesterday, which is why the house is still in a bit of a mess. Just fell over another of those bloody boxes for about the fiftieth time. Don't worry, nothing broken. Oh, stub me toe though. Oh, take a break, love. We've been we've both done enough for today. Let's have a cup of tea. I think just a little sit down will do just as well. <laughs> you know, it smells a bit like Grimsby out there today. Well, we're only a few hundred yards from the docks. Yeah, but I, I don't remember that smell when we viewed the place. Well, I expect the wind is blowing in from the sea today. I mean, the estate agent did mention it, to be fair. Well, she said we might get a whiff of fish on a delivery day if the wind come carries it in. Well, I think today is when the boot comes in. Oh, so wise not to attempt the accent, dear. Does it bother you? Well... It's not very nice, but I'll learn to live with it. Probably why the house was such a good price. Oh, I almost forgot. Guess what arrived while you were out? Um, the rest of the furniture? Well, that's next week. No, the cart. The cart? All the way from Oman. Blimey, you're kidding. Truth be told, I was half expecting it not to turn up at all. Me too, but lo and behold, here it is. The very week the chap said. For a backstreet carpenter, seems like he's got a good business head. Come and have a look. It's on the patio. Oh, right. There. Isn't it gorgeous? I fell in love with it when I saw it on in front of his shack. Look at the craftsmanship. As it's spring, I'll plant some flowers in it, and by summer, it'll make a lovely centrepiece to the garden. I have to say, I was sceptical when he said he'd send it to England. Seems like he was a genuine fellow, though. Glad we took the risk. It's a very attractive thing, and a, and a nice piece of holiday memorabilia. Isn't it? Oh. Speaking of memorabilia, have you uh, come across my trophy? Yes. It's in the box on the landing. I saw it this morning. Ah, oh, that's a relief. I wouldn't want to lose it. About that. I know it means a lot to you, but since we've got a chance to start our decoration from scratch, can we not have it in the centre of the mantelpiece? What's wrong with it? Really? A bit of tin shape like a crown with David Hayes, the Lion King, engraved on it. I mean, it's, well, it's a bit, well. Laugh, 
I know, it's naff and it's tat, tatty tat even, but I hardly ever win anything. And coming first in the shaggy dog competition at the Rotary Club was an achievement for me. Also, it reminds me of home. I, I, I mean then, it, it, it reminds me of then. David Love, you did want to move, didn't you? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, of course. It was time to downsize a bit now that the kids have moved on. Good. Because it's a little bit late now anyway. Listen, huh? here's an idea. Why don't you put the trophy up on the wall outside the front door, just below the bell, at least for now? It's got your name on it, so it would act as a plate for who lives here. And the terrible little joke will act as a talking point for new visitors. You know, that that's not a bad idea. It can actually be useful then. I'll go and do that now before I forget. Now, have you seen any hammers or nails yet? Oh, wait. Actually, as it happens, I think they might have been in that box I just dropped. <laughs> going to be a lovely garden in summer. I think I shall enjoy living here. Even if it does occasionally reek of codfish. Well, they seem like a nice couple. A bit stressed by moving house, but otherwise well grounded, relaxed. The same cannot be said currently for those at number 19. Speaking of which, is someone we haven't met before. Mum. I don't know her name because everyone just calls her Mum. She's Catherine's mother and has been living with Nigel and Catherine ever since her husband died a few years ago. Oh! How could that be? All right, all right, I'm coming. God, I nearly had a heart attack. Oh, it's a parcel. Not for me, of course. Oh. Now, Mr. Doorbell, you've scared the willies out of me for the last time. I'm going to fix you. <laughs> you try bingy-bonging me to death now. Mm. It's strange. Oh. Catherine? Yes, Mum? Catherine, do we have a dog? No, Mum, we don't have a dog. You've lived with us for years. I think you'd have noticed by now if we had a dog. Well, it looks like we have a dog. Quite a big dog. Mum, what are you talking about? Oh, oh my God, where the hell did that come from? From the dog? We don't have a dog, Mum. <laughs> Nigel? What's all the shouting about? Ah, ah, uh, yeah. I see. Hello, Nigel. The dog did it, love. Ignore her. Do you have any idea how this could have happened? Ah, uh, Mum, I don't think you need to worry yourself about this. Why don't you go and take it easy in front of the telly? I think there's a new bottle of gin in the sideboard. Oh, all right. I don't mind if I do. Nigel? Nigel, uh, are you wearing makeup? God, uh, yes, Mum, that's right. I'm wearing makeup. For work, is it? Uh, uh, yes, that'll do. It, uh, it's for a, a, a cat food sales campaign. Oh, that's nice. You are a clever boy. Catherine, isn't he a clever boy? <laughs> nice one, darling. I do love her, but I was getting ready to clock her one all the same. So, where did this come from? Well, I think it's mine, actually. I'm sorry. Mine. Yours? What do you mean, yours? Well, what do you think I mean? I bought it in a shop. I mean, I did it. But how... Why... Nigel, we have two bathrooms. Yes, but see... It, it, it's it's like this. Uh, I'm growing a tail and my legs don't quite bend the way they used to, so I don't really get on well with, you know, the way it's like 
designed. I see. So the hall carpet is the next best option. Here's the thing. Uh, we were having a bit of a row and I got cross with you, so I think I wanted to punish you. Not consciously, of course, kind of subliminally. Then I think I just forgot about it. You forgot? You did this on the carpet and then just forgot? What the fuck, Nigel? Anyone would think you were... A cat. I think I'm just beginning to see a drawback to your new condition. Only just? How far does this go, darling? I give you fair warning right now that if you start bringing me dead rodents, it's going to put quite a strain on our marriage. Come on, let's flush this. Uh, no, I don't think you're supposed to put Cat Watts it down the loo. There's regulations. Whatever. Get a shovel and take it down to the bottom of the garden then. I'll get some carpet shampoo. Sounds like the sham poo is not the problem there. <laughs> Just see what I did there. <clears throat> anyway, Nigel and Catherine are going to be busy, it seems, and I don't think we need to watch it's that particular bit of housework. So let's go back to number 21 for a while. Sheila, dear. Mm. Did the estate agent mention anything about there being any issues with what uh, they used to call care in the community around here? No. But she wouldn't, would she? Why do you ask? Well, you know next door's apple tree that grows close to our fens? Yes. Now, this is going to sound odd, but a fellow in a fur coat has just ate his way up it like some Olympic gymnast and he's carrying a shovel or something. Good Lord, he's just hurled the shovel over onto our patio, and I can't see exactly he's amongst the leaves, but there seems to be some kind of struggle. <laughs> no, as God's my witness. Oh, it, it stopped now, and he's making some sort of wailing sound. And now he's fallen out of the tree. How odd. Well, you better go and see what's happened and what he's dropped. He might want it back. Well, I can't see any reason why he'd want this back. What a bloody cheek. Why couldn't he dispose of it in his own garden? <coughs> Oh, God. Oh, David. Don't bring that into the house. It was disgusting. Take it away. How is it in the bushes? Not on your life. This is evidence, this is. Where are those plastic boxes from last night's Chinese? I'm going to leave it out in the sun to dry up a bit and then put this into one and take it right back next door and ask him face to face whether he'd like it back and what on earth he thinks he's doing. I bet he didn't know we'd arrived yet. Oh, David, don't make a fuss. We don't want to get off on the wrong foot with our new neighbours. They, apparently, don't feel the same. Oh, no. It's Stephen. What's he doing here? That's all I need. Let's pretend we're not here. You want to hide from your own son? No, I'm hiding from his fucking kazoo. Language, dear? Sorry, but I really wish I'd never bought it him. Well, yes, so do I. <laughs> but he means well. He means to drive us all insane. That's what. What ho, chaps? How's tricks? Oh, we're fine, son. And I hear you got a promotion. Well done. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm now a flight lieutenant. And what's more, I say, but why is there a, a shovel of soil on the couch? On the couch? Oh, David, really? Take it out into the sun, like you said. Oh, I say, uh, 
It's not soil, is it? No. Well, well, uh, don't you two lead uh, interesting lives? What's all that about, then? Well, it's... Oh, it's not important right now. Tell us how you came to be in the area. Well, I just got back to Blighty for a few days' leave from the old uh, flying about Larkwatt. Hadn't been back more than a few hours when good old Janity Bibbs tells me she needs to, to suddenly visit her sick mother in Edinburgh. Had uh, you been playing the kazoo? As a matter of fact, yes. I was serenading her. Uh, how did you know? Just a wild guess. Anyway, since she was off doing the, uh, the Good Samaritan thing, I thought I'd pop in on old Mater and Pater and help out with some of the heavy lifting. Oh, that's very sweet of you, darling. But you didn't need to bring your, um, music. What? Leave old Zooey behind? Certainly not. I've got to keep practising. I'm trying to talk them into letting her into the RAF band. Good luck with that. Oh, thanks, Popsicle. I'm getting quite good at it. I, I've pretty much mastered when the saints listen. No! <laughs> Stephen, please cast your mind back to what I said to you the last time you played that in our house. Can you remember? I believe it was something about me playing it with my other mouth if I carried on. Correct. Well remembered. Now guess what? Nothing has changed. We are delighted to see you, son, but Zooey is not included in our enthusiasm. Oh, what a shame. Well, uh, never mind. Uh, can, I, can I help with anything? Open some boxes or, or what? Oh, no, not really, darling. The heavy stuff doesn't arrive until next week, and that's when we'll really be snowed under. I mean, there's just a few boxes of odd bits and bobs by the front door. We can manage those. Right-ho. Uh, I'll see if I can pop around again next week, then. Meanwhile, uh, I might as well practice, anyway. Uh, can I play in the garden? If you must, but don't annoy the neighbours. No, no, on second thoughts, do annoy the neighbours. But be advised, if anybody should shoot you, it's nothing to do with us. Copy that, Peter. Oh, uh, uh, the garden chairs haven't arrived. There's, there's only that dinky little cart. Uh, look, I'll, I'll borrow a couple of cushions and, and sit there, then. Uh, looks quite comfortable, actually. Uh, Call me if you need anything, uh, won't you? Uh, pip pip for now. So they have their problems too, it seems. Now, I don't know about you, but the whole incident with the shovel sounds quite strange to me. So let's move back to number 19 and see if we can find out what it's all about. So, you threw it onto the neighbour's patio? Well, there was that magpie. There was a magpie. But not just a magpie. That magpie. The evil little bastard who wakes us up every morning at five o'clock with his raucous chattering. I was heading down the garden with the shovel, and there he was, sitting in the apple tree. Bold as brass, squawking at me and really giving me the eye, daring me to have a go. Yeah, I couldn't let that lie, could I? Of course not. So I head up the tree, I can do that now, you know, and ready to punch him out for his cheek. Of course, he wasn't that easy to find. Pretty much vanished among the leaves, and as I was searching, somewhere along the line, my attention wandered from the shovel, and I guess I ditched it. So... You threw your poo into the neighbour's garden while you were trying to punch an invisible magpie. Now there's a sentence I didn't expect to say any time soon. Exactly. Then the magpie flew off and I overstretched a bit and fell out of the tree. I winded myself for a minute or two and by the time I remembered the shovel, somebody from next door had already come out and nabbed it. Otherwise I'd have been over the fence and retrieved it. Well, some people do think it's customary to give new neighbours a gift of some kind. Usually it's a pie or a casserole or something like that. Maybe they won't know where it came from? Yeah, perhaps they'll think it fell out of an aeroplane. You think? No, of, of course they'll know where it came from. Well, what do we do? 
It's not a great way to introduce yourself to new people. Uh, excuse me, can we have our shovel of poo back, please? We can't do anything. We just hope they overlook it long enough for us to get to know them. Then we can eventually explain and all have a good laugh about it. Beep, beep, beep. I beg your pardon, Mum. Beep, beep, beep. That's the noise the, the box on the hall table just made. I think it left you a message. Just now? I think so. Oh, thanks, Mum. We'll listen to it shortly. I think it was the police. What? Well, it's not easy to hear because it squirbles quite a lot. But I'm sure I heard the word police in there. Oh, bollocks. They've reported us already. <laughs> Let's see if this senile old thing has got it right this time. What's that? Oh, not you, Mum. The answer phone. <laughs> Here we go. Message one. Thursday, 4th December. We received your gift. I a visit from the police. Coming round later. You have no new messages. Oh, well, that's clear as day. Why do we still keep this piece of junk? It must be 30 years old. We don't even really need a landline anymore, let alone the world's least helpful answer phone. It's a modern antique. Do you know how long it got me? It took me to get it working properly? You can't get the parts nowadays. Working properly? Mm-hmm. Well, on the plus side, it doesn't sound like it's actually the police, but it's almost certainly next door responding to our gift. Wait a minute. How would they have our number? Oh! That's easy, Catherine. I popped a note under their door a few days ago with our names and number. What? Why would you do that? Just being good neighbours, in case they needed anything doing. I was only trying to be helpful. Yes, Mum, I'm, I'm sure you were. That's uh, fine. So, yes, it, it could be them. But it's a little circumstantial, so let's not jump to conclusions. Well... The only ones who will know for sure is next door. We should ask them. Don't you think it's a bit soon? What if they get confrontational? Well, they, they have a right to be cross, I warrant. But, but leaving a threatening message for us to hear is also not very neighbourly. We should record it as best we can and take it round with us. Then if they get bolshy, we can play it to them. OK, that might work. It's going to be a bit obvious if we turn up on the doorstep with an answer phone the size of a suitcase, though. And I seriously doubt they have anything available to play this vintage mini cassette. Oh, I know, I'll transfer it to a USB stick. Great. And then when you take it round, you Wait, 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 wait. When I take it round, you're the salesman. You're the one with the people skills. It's your business. Come to think of it, this whole thing is about your business. You take it round. Really? Just how insane do you want them to think we are? Very well, I'll make the recording now. You are so going to owe me an apology once this is over. And I have a feeling the apology might involve truly insane amounts of chocolate. So, are we all going round to visit the new neighbours then? No, Mum. Go back to your gin. Hmm. I'm not sure that's quite the way I'd handle it. But folks are folks. And cat folks are cat folks. And I'm certainly curious to see how this pans out. Right. I'm outside their door. His name is David Hayes, according to this weird little plaque. It's shaped like a crown and says, David Hayes, the Lion King. How odd. It looks like it's an award. The Lion King. I see what they did there. That's quite good. Don't get distracted. Ring the bell. Yeah, right. I'll, I'll ring the bell. Go on then. Yep. I'm going to ring it now. Right now. Gonna going to ring it. I'm not going to ring it. You can't chicken out now. Just ring it. The rest will follow. Okay, right. Let me just check I've got the USB stick. I put it into this pocket. Oh, shit, I've dropped it. Well, pick it up then. Quick. I didn't see where it went. 
damn, I, I bet it fell in one of those cardboard boxes full of whatever. Loads of odds and sods, I think. Search for it. If they find it later, it'll look like a taunt. I'm not standing on the doorstep rummaging through our new neighbour's belongings. What if the Wilsons at number 24 are watching? It'll be all round the district in no time at all. So what are you going to do? Would it be all right by you if I, I, I just panic for a minute or two? Now there's a DPD van pulling up. Outside which house? Take a wild guess. Crap! Why are they getting deliveries? They haven't even moved in properly yet. I don't know, but that's really not the issue, is it? I'll hide in this bush until it's gone. Oh, God, it's a pyracanthus. It's covered in massive thorns. Ow, shit! Ow! He hasn't seen me. Hang on. He's stopped and put his parcel down. He's, he's bending down to pick up the USB. It fell off the step onto the path. God, he's looking for somewhere to put it. And he's put it underneath that crown thing. Now he's picking up his parcel and he's ringing the bell. Shit! The delivery man can't see me. But if anyone answers the door, they've got a direct line of sight to me. Oh God, if I get spotted, we're going to graduate from common or garden lunatics to dangerous lunatics. I've got to try to move. Ow! Ow! Hey, the husband's answered. And he's trying to hide something from the delivery man. Looks like a Tupperware box or something. Find for his package and the delivery guy is leaving. Right, uh, I'm going round now. Turn your phone on and I'll keep you updated. He, he waited until Mr. DPD had gone. Now he's coming out with his little box. Oh, God, he looked my way. I, I, I don't think he saw me, though. Oh, he's gone all furtive. He's, he's trying to sneak, keep him below the hedge. He's heading for our place. Sheila, you there? Yes. Don't come out and look, but the lady from next door is hiding in our pyracanthus. I ducked down behind the hedge, so I, I don't think she saw me. Why is she doing? That sounds quite painful. I don't know. I'll go and ask her, shall I? Yeah, he, he's definitely gone over to our house, but he's gone out of view. You could come out and meet him. No, don't do that. You look too ridiculous. Yeah, well remembered. Go back and get the stick. Sod the stick. That's the least of my worries. I'm sitting here feeling very much like a bloody pincushion, and I can't go in either house in case I'm spotted. Well, it'll be dark soon. Then you can sneak back. Oh, well, that's such a relief. Only an hour or two more of being poked full of holes. Remember that chocolate? It's just been upgraded to diamonds. Made it to their porch. Oh, I miss my vocation. I could have been a spy. You could have asked the lady in the bush about the... You know. I could. But somehow, complaining about... You know, to a lady hiding in a bush in our front garden feels like it devalues the situation somehow. This needs to be done with some dignity. Well, are you going to ring the bell then? I just did. I say, they might be clinically insane according to all evidence to date, but they've got good taste. This is a lovely porch. It's one of those Midwestern American style affairs with a covered fenced boardwalk. There's a little occasional table and even a stereotypical rocking chair. And the clematis growing up the far side is beautiful. I would mind later. Let's just get this awful business over with. There's no answer. I, I know there's a man in residence, so perhaps he's ignoring me. Or well, the bell doesn't work? Well, I'll try once more, but they're not getting away with it that easily. I know they're around. Mrs. Crazy Pants is hiding in the bush. No, nothing. Right? I'm just going to sit here until she comes back then. 
I'll use the I'll use this rocking chair. I could do with a sit down anyway. Oh, it's been such a tiring day. Oh! Oh, botheration. The chair's broken. Must be in worse nick than it looked. Oh dear, well, come on back then. Can't we call it even now? They soil our patio, we break their chair. Sheila dear, we're not Laurel and Hardy. I'm not trying to start a tit for tat war. Wait a minute, the chair has only given a bit. One well, of the struts has snapped, but it's, it's still reasonably sturdy and quite comfortable. A bit crooked, uh, but it'll do. I'll wait here and call you if anything changes. Oh dear. I hope he knows what he's doing. Well, they all seem to be getting into a bit of a mess, don't they? Poor Catherine. But don't worry. I think she's about to be rescued because here comes our final player in this little drama. How are you doing, darling? Hurting. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'd come out if I thought... Wait, wait. Someone's coming. Good Lord, it's Billy. Your brother, Billy. Yes, I'd recognise those shoes anywhere. Let me go to him. Ow! Ow! Billy boy! Sis! Heavens! Why are you hiding in the neighbour's bush? A long story. Oh, good! I do like a long one. Oh, don't start that now, Billy. You know how it irritates Nigel. And, well, you know, me. <laughs> I incidentally, speaking of Nigel, there's something you ought to know about him. <sighs> Come on, let's go indoors. Hello, Billy. Oh, sis was right. You have changed. What? A catastrophe! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I've already done that gag. Lovely to see you, Billy, but what brings you here today? Aren't you on the midway at the moment? Oh! Didn't you get my message? I'm here to stay for a couple of days. What message? Oh! Your message! Yes! Sorry it's such short notice. I assumed it would be all right. It was all a bit sudden. Old man Miggins is being questioned by the police. There's been a bit of a drug problem at the carnival and we've been shut down for a week. We're all on leave but have been told to stay in the area. Luckily, we were due to set up at Brown's Patch just down the road so I thought I'd land on my lovely sis and bro in North for a spell and thank you both for my lovely birthday gift. How appropriate. It's been a bit of a circus here today. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a joke, Billy. Oh, sorry. Force of habit. Somebody take that horn off him. Oh, hello, William. What a lovely surprise. I didn't know you were coming round. Are you wearing makeup? Yes, Mum. Is it for work? Yes, Mum. I'm a clown. Nigel wears makeup now, too. It's made out of cat food. No, no, Mum. That's not what I said. I. Oh, never mind. Both my favourite boys wearing makeup. I'm so glad you're taking an interest in your appearance. An adherence to appearance. <laughs> Be quiet, Billy. Sorry. You can take the spare room and dump your stuff there now if you like. Actually, I think I'll take a step into the garden first and catch some of that sea air. I do love visiting you two. It's such a lovely place you have. You might be a little disappointed today, I'm afraid. It's Fisherman's Day. There's a distinct coddy tang to the air blowing in from the docks. Uh, I can't smell anything. That's because you're still wearing that absurd nose. When you take it off, you'll notice the smell. When I do what? When you take off your red nose. Sorry, Nigel. Not quite sure what you're getting at. What? You never... 
Oh, for heaven's sake. I, I don't know why I'm surprised, really. I could happily live here. Wouldn't bother me. Kath, we need to nip that in the bud. I'll just take a few min minutes to unwind, then. I say! What's that noise? It's coming from next door. I think there's some chap in the garden blowing on his instrument. <laughs> Billy. Billy! Enough with a sodding horn. Oh, come on. Give me a break. I couldn't let that one go. <laughs> I think it's a kazoo. Jesus, it's awful. How can anyone play a kazoo badly? Isn't it just basically humming? I don't mind the smell, but that could certainly get on my nerves. This from Captain Hook. Honk. Putting the kazoos red noses and fish aside for a moment thinking about it if that message was from billy even if next door get to hear it they'll have absolutely no idea what it's all about and can't possibly think it's anything to do with us so we've slipped through that net oh, you're right oh thank god for that now we just have to think about a way to explain the shovel of one shit. problem at a time love one problem at a time well uh... I hope you're following all this. I'm just about hanging in there. Everybody seems to be congregating at number 19, even if David is still out on the veranda. Let's see what's going on at number 21. David? Are you back yet? Is it now? But it's starting to get dark. Oh, I think it'll get violent. I'm sure he's all right. Oh, it's no good. I'm going to have to find out what's going on. Oh, must get David to look at our pyrocanthus. It's looking a bit tatty. Looks like an elephant has tromped through it. Well, now, will you look at that? There he is asleep on the floor in that crunky old chair. That's what he calls a box of evidence on the table. Good. But that means the balloon hasn't gone up yet. I'll let him sleep. He can do less damage that way. And I'll see if I can sort this out amicably. There must be a way round the back so I won't wake him. Off. Sorry. Take it easy, Nigel. Have a glass of wine. Sounds like they're having a party. I suppose that means they won't mind if I interrupt them. What was that? What was what? Somebody, somebody at the that. window. It's the woman from next door. Oh God, she's brought the police round. Don't be absurd, darling. The police wouldn't be tapping on the back window. What does she want, then? There's only one way to find out. Good evening. Mrs Hayes, is it? Come in. What can we do for you? Would you like a drink? Oh, that's very kind, dear. Thank you. But no, um, I'll not be stopping. Uh, oh, I see you're having a, a fancy dress party. <laughs> Best excuse yet. Just wondered where, where, whether my husband has been here. Not to my knowledge. Ah, well, that's good then. Um, there's been some very odd things going on here today and I, I think we need to put our heads together and find out what it's all about. I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Well, there's an explanation. I imagine you're referring to the, uh, shovel. And the business in the tree. And... Who's playing that kazoo? Uh, and for some reason, our front garden has taken a bit of a beating. But I'm sure that's not your concern. Mrs Hayes. Please, call me Sheila. Thank you. I'm Catherine Milton and this is Nigel, my husband, my brother Billy and Mum. She Sheila, 
I'm very grateful for you coming round and giving us the chance to sort this out. Let's see, where do I start? The doggy do on the carpet. No dog, Mum. No, let's start with the fact that Nigel here is turning into a cat and he accidentally soiled the carpet. Then, when he tried to clear it up, a magpie made him throw it into your garden and then... Actually, this is starting to sound a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. A little bit, dear, yes. Well, uh, acutely embarrassing as this is for me, I don't see a better way to tell her what's going on. Why don't we ask the voicey man? <laughs> Sorry, Sheila. Mum gets a bit surreal sometimes. What? No, wait, I think she's actually come up with something this time. By Jove, I think I know what you mean. You there, Mr Know-It-All. How about you help us out here? Come on, you know who we mean. You there, commenting on everything we do. Um, do you mean me? Yes, you. Chatting away there to yourself all day. You... you can hear me? Of course we can bloody hear you. We're not deaf. But I thought... convention. Oh, well, never mind. What was it you wanted me to do? You've been around us all day, watching everything. Yes. Bet you've been doing the same thing next door, haven't you? Might have. Right. So then, who's in a better position to explain to Sheila than you? Okay, so you want a summary of the situation? Yes, please. Are you sure? Yes. yes! Yes! Not going to like it. All right, deep thought. Never mind the, the oracular pomposity. Get on with it. <sighs> okay. Here's the thing. There's a cockeyed fellow idol on the porch with Catman poo. There's a stick of garbled dross below the crown. There's a bloke in a cart from Oman lends a brave but bad kazoo. And the smell of cod will never faze the clown. That was The Hound with the Long Hair, written and directed by Tony Cottrell, produced by Jenny Trickett, with sound by Felicity Morgan. And the whole thing was another spiffing online production from Q2 Players. <laughs>